All right, so what's number, what's number three? Pusa Dao Ying, no sexual misconduct. I think this is even bigger than anything else, above anything else. All right. You can say I might be a, a you know, like a religious. Yes, I am. So we are. And the whole point of having this restriction in every single major religion, in Christianity, you know, no wedlock, you know, you need to um, wait for marriage before you actually commit the uh, sexual intercourse and all that. Or in even in Muslim uh, communities, they still have that, right? May I can agree their opinions, I understand, but more or less they have this restriction on that because it prevents more heartbreaking or in a in way it prevents something that are regrettable, all right? Especially pregnancy. The third person is involved, which is your children. And it can be really painful if extramarital affair or you know, premarital affair happens. You know, you might not lock in with the person and then you're not sure they are right or not. And then you you kind of, you know, allowing yourself to carry it. It's very complicated. I am not wise enough, no experience enough uh, to to give a very definitive uh, opinion. There's something I need to acknowledge. Um, there are certain circumstances where divorce may, may be for the better, but most of the time, it should be done properly, as in it should be done amicably while caring for the children, both sides, no matter the the ex-wife and the stepfather, they should also work together um, to care for the children as if it's their own. Then I can say this is a better ending. Some people just, in comically speaking, they are yuan fen yi jing. They are, they are um, that's what I'm saying, if I'm going towards three lives, it's actually better understanding. They are, you know, they are, they are, how to say, they are yin yuan, their um, marital affinity has ended. You know, some, some people just like, ah, like, you know, we can move on. And they have no strong commitments or even if they have children, they have a very nice amicable relationship even though they sort of break up and divorce. That's fine. Right? Do it maturely and really nicely. And that's fine that situation i would say in in our modern context but bottom line those are not extra major affair these wars are not they if they do it right you know they don't commit adultery outside their marriage they just can't move on like they're just like yeah man i think we should call it call it quit then fine but this one is when you're inside a marriage and then you commit something out beyond that and it's like a huge it's like a how to say it's actually a rave topic, uh, not rave topic, it's actually a hot topic. It TikToks and all that, more uh, social media, you know, it becomes a, a part of the joke in a sense, like, hey, you know, they always like, you know, prank on their boyfriend, and girlfriend, because I watch a lot of this lately, but prank on their boyfriend, and girlfriend, and say, hey, I'm cheating. Or, you know, there's this, you know, your boyfriend's or girlfriend holding the phone and then the other side trying to grab the phone and see who they're texting. <sighs> Why do you think this happens? You know? Where's the trust? There's no trust. And, and if you say, I can fully trust, people would be like, are you a fool? Uh, more or less, people would do that. It has to do, this is complicated, and I, it's no way, in no way I can say this is, I do a lot of disclaimer, because this is quite sensitive. And, but the bottom line is, um, once you're locked in with that person, you know, be fair, be, be honest. There's a bottom line about it, right? Marriage is, something like like you sign up a contract 18 months gym contract this is applicable to myself 18 months gym contract what does it do like do you mean that does it mean that every single week you'll be like very active and you'll be like doing the workout and all that you, to fulfill to to how to say get your worth out of it no but a contract is a contract you get signed in 18 months and you need to do your best to make the best out of it so for your marriage, same thing. You sign a life contract, basically, with each other. All right? That's why they make it paper, official, ceremony, both side witnessing, you know, getting bigger and bigger. Your own parents, their parents, they are looking at, what's the whole point of this? People might say marriage, you know, is the graveyard of romance. To be honest, if you understand deeper level on the na nature of romance, if you just build your whole marriage or relationship on romance, good luck. 
it will not last. All right. It has to be based on something uh, more deeper connection. Um, and, and it's like a teamwork. You know, if you want this partnership to last longer, you got to work on it. It's not something you just sit there and say, oh, yeah, I have a good relationship. Yes, it happens. And that's not because they don't do any work. They already done their work before they were born. All right. They have a deep connection. This is why it's important to have understanding of life beyond this life. All right. Makes things make sense. It just makes sense. Whether it's scientifically proven or not, technology is not up there yet. How can you say no? All right. If it's logically sound and robust, if it's actually even more robust than denying it. If you deny it, you might sound like a, like a, ostrich head in the sand but back to the point you know there are always exceptions and the point of exception is people might already have a good relationship in their past life they have a deep connection in their past life now they just they just need to light link up and then they got got on together very well easily but most of the time you need to work on it and i, I i'm not married I'm, i don't have even i don't even have a relationship but what i can understand and observe from people who do uh, my own parents in, involved is they work on it. They don't just have a very nice and smooth sailing relationship. It's um, realistically no. You got to work on it. You got to have to like just like you work in your work, uh, day work, or work on your hobby, uh, work on your passion project or whatever. You got to put your heart into it. And they are the person's got to work in it as well. And with that consensus, extramarital affair is very unlikely unless put in a very extreme circumstance. Even then, if, if this partnership really works very well, every, both sides really understand the boundaries, really um, want to make this relationship work, and able to understand their boundaries means that no matter how many flare temper was thrown out, they will not say that word. Or uh, 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 divorce or, or break up with you. They will, they will kind of compromise when it reaches that point, they were like, okay, I'll compromise this. The other person understands it, kicks on in, and they also compromise this. And this, this is why it's so interesting, to be honest, if you're a psychologist. Damn, I should do psychology. But anyway, the point is, you know, this pull and push and pull is common. And right? it's how every relationship works, um, even in a normal one, a normal friend. Obviously not as intense, but yeah. So why am I dragging all this from the word no extramarital affair or no sexual misconduct because the whole point of having sexual misconduct is to find trio on the other side and the whole point to avoid the trio by stepping out of your bound which means you sleep with other person outside your marriage is to find the trio inside your boundary reinvent your relationship trying to find something interesting to do together all right and it can't work if both sides doesn't want to work. And the whole point of both sides doesn't want to work, Some, most of the time is they have stuck in that perception of their other half. Like, this person is going to act like that forever. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put on autopilot when I'm dealing with this other half of me, or my partner, or my wife, my husband. All right. No matter what your orientation is, relationship is like that. doesn't matter. I'm putting it in a very modern way. Autopilot, you're like, this guy is going to act like that. All right, so I'm just going to, you know, put up that wall and react the same thing. Repeat and repeat. Just like wash the first sentence I give today. Washing machine, recycling the dark, the, the mud inside. And then you will never get clean. Unless you pour in the clean water, open up the wall and let the dirty water going out. It takes many cycles to get out of it. Same goes for relationship. You need to, you know, if, if you're in a long-term relationship, as in a proper marriage, a long marriage, one side's got to be quiet when the other side jumping around. And when the other side jumping around, they got to learn to read the room and understand and, and re-communicate. You know, they can't just do it all the time. Unless the other side is really patient and really deep cultivation, they can just take it. They just jump around. And the other side... Or more, more or less, you know, the other person will probably understand that they are wrong. Uh, when they overreact, they'll be like, yeah, I overreacted. And this um, partner of mine always being tolerant. Or my husband or wife always being tolerant. Uh, feel bad. So they're trying to make up for it. 
All right, I'm getting too deep into that. What I'm trying to say is, if you don't want to, your other half to seek through outside, you better seek through inside your relationship. Doesn't matter what, within the boundaries. There are boundaries. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have bound. Everyone should have a boundary. This is how operationally we work. All right. What we talk about all that high level stuff without boundaries. There's no right or wrong, male or female or anything. Those things happens. Those are those are the originating. Those are what it looks like in the foundation. But when you actually put it, crystallize into this, there are boundaries. And and operating it, you need to follow a certain rule, like rules of physics all that. Those things are not conflicting. I can't explain it better because I'm not there yet, but I hope this can offer some useful advice for whoever is watching or even myself, you know, how to deal with people. No matter it's a romantic relationship or just a normal working relationship or friendship or family. Same thing. Same thing. All right. But sexual misconduct directly towards husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend. All right. And why am I going to do it? Because this is a big topic. Eventually in future, if I keep going to do this, I'm going to have a specific topic on this one to drill out every single modern issues while also reflecting on my own past wrongdoings as well. All right. Those things I, I would need to admit if I want to, if I want to come clean and purified. And actually being honest and open up. Let people also feel safe and come in and talk about this. Only when we have open communication and uh, while being respectful of people's feelings and opinions, um, then we can have a real progress, making a real progress with ourselves. Change. Right? We need each other, to be honest. No matter what happens, we need a community. We need the people to grow. You have to do your work yourself, but... When you do a certain level of work, you gotta have to come to the community and share it, and other people might give you a different insight. And then this is how you grow. That's why Master Ching Kong still have a Dao Chang, right? No matter his, you know, his condition, you still have to sit there and talk about Jiang Jing. He still have to do something to communicate with people, even though he likes to be uh, silent and peace and quiet. He's still, you know, inviting a lot of guests over and talk with him and ask him questions. And he's, he's doing it non-stop until he can't, physically can't in the last few years, right? He physically cannot, all right? On, that's only happening recently. So back to the point, number three is sexual misconduct, all right? Um, either outside of marriage or before marriage. Before marriage is another topic, which I think is more important to say because this is about right and wrong. People say, why not? We, why can't we live together? No one's stopping you. This is a free will. All right. However, I still have to give the one piece about that because it's a duty as a, uh, we hang in the name of Amitabha in there and Buddha in there. And we need to be clear about this. All right. You may call me traditionalist and we call it, you know, very traditional, old fashioned. It's fine. It's, it's right. Old fashioned. Sometimes old fashioned is not always wrong. Okay. Sometimes older things are good. The reason, there are reasons why people don't do that sexual intercourse before marriage because all right you don't know that person they don't know this person and then you just commit to it my result is it feels cheap you cheapen the whole thing no one denies sexual intercourse is pleasurable all right let's talk about the others uh, like of course we can talk about uh, that but if you do it just to do it just to have a thrill it cheapens the whole thing Everything is better when it has proper meaning in it. It becomes emotional, not just physical act. This act is also an emotional, physical, and spiritual as well. It can be that level, but emotional and physical. And this can only be done when both sides are agreeing and actually serious about it. I say, oh, I don't need marriage to do that. I can be serious about relationship. But like, you don't know that person you're just physically drawn to them. You have that kind of act. You did the deed. All right? It's a common nowadays. No one will bat an eye. But I still have to say it because it's, it's, not, it's my duty. All right? I've carried the name of Buddha. Then. I need to carry out. Or I, need to, I need to lay it out properly. And I hope Christian friend and Muslim friend might chip in if they have. This thing, um, how to say, if you actually understand the steps of relationship, 
the chances are you would start with understanding. 好像蔡老师讲的，相知 ，you need to need to know each other, and then you need to start to understand what they are, not just in the date and good good looking, good makeup. You actually need to understand the people they are around their friends and stuff. And this happens when you deal with that person long enough, or hang out with that person long enough. Naturally, they will show up more side of their own because they more trusting of you, and you understand that this can go beyond just friendship and boyfriend and girlfriend, and then do it normally without needing to do that, the the deed, and it's it's in contrary to what current society because we always talk about sexual liberation and and you know there's all that. You can go with that. This is a free country. I'm in a free country. You're in a free country. Most of you are in a free country. I can't say no. Even I say no, you will you won't stop, right? But what I can do is I can tell you what is this. What this sentence is about. What is the benefit? What is the, the harm cost benefit analysis? Okay. It's more beneficial to hold it back, to wait. Good things wait, right? Good things last longer, right? And if you want want it to last longer, you need to think about: Do I just do this for the sake of it, or do I really care about that person? I really want to have a good life with that person. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna be patient, and I'm not even gonna think about it because these things comes and goes. It's not easy, but it comes and goes. And this kind of thing is how to say what is good is you get to know the other person deeper beyond just sexual attraction. And、that's where good marriages was found. You get to know because right now there's no very seldom. Right, I still have friends who parents still arrange marriage, and they they kind of consent to it. They were like, yeah, it's fine. All right, it's not like forced, but nowadays is you have to go out and find it on your own. It's not easy.、Um, you still need your best friend if you don't not comfortable with your parents. You still your best friend to look at it. And it also depends on your friend's value, right? Right or wrong, the the right view. So in this case, if I want to make it more nuanced and more sophisticated, uh, a, a subtle on this one is, it's better to hold and wait and observe, and then build your dynamics with the other half beyond, all right, beyond just sexual attraction, good look, and all that. Those things are obviously you will already know the first hand. You'll pick it in the first hand. But you need to go beyond that. You need to look deeper, and then only then you can say, okay, this person I can deal with that person. You know the bad and the good, and then my bad or my good, they can she also can deal with you, and only then you can like, okay, let's work deeper on this, get more closer, more intimate, and then I hope with marriage it will seal the deal properly, all right, and then unwrap the gift, both sides. I know the way I say is crude. I know it's not Buddhist or anything, but the thing is that it's nothing wrong. It's very, it's very open about it. Buddha can even talk about that properly、um, in in one of the sutra as well. Like you know, we all need to co- carry ourselves properly, and then there are time, places, to do things like that. As a lay person, of course, monastic is entirely. You don't want to do that. That's why you are monastic. If you're a lay person, you can do that in the right time, right place. Right level of relationship. Like you cannot do it in the wrong time, wrong place. I don't want to go too much, and then wrong level of relationship. That means it's prematurely, right? Wrong place. I'm not going to go too deep into it. Everyone knows. Wrong time. All right. When funeral is happening, or you know the day that Buddha become enlightened, if you're a Buddhist, or Christmas, you know, if you're Christian, or Muhammad.、Um, Whatever the sages' holiday or the day to commemorate your parents passing, those things is because you out of respect you don't do things this kind of thing in front of them. So, what I'm trying to say is, like business, right? You have to sign up the contract. You have the feasibility check because I'm working in business banking. You have to sign up the contract. Before you sign the contract, you need to check the other person. Do they have a ability to repay the debt if you want to loan money as a bank? You need to understand that person's character, the credit check, credibility. You know, is this person able to repay? Is this too much for this person? All right. If this person has a worst case scenario, can this person overtake it? These are the 
frontal part, the, the, the cognitive, the, the rational part of your brain thinking. This is important. Because if this crash down, you crash down. All right? This has to come first in anything, even relationship. That's why cultivation is important. Always have practice using this instead of fully. In. This is good. This is emotional in the middle. But the back and the front is about survival, cognitive, number one. You know, right? You don't jump off the cliff. Number two, you don't touch the scorching fire. Number three, if a grizzly bear is running towards you, you better run. Or in Australia, if an emu is running towards you, you better run. All right? This part is where all the beautiful art, the music, and, you know, that deep thing going on, you know. And the section we're going to is mixing up these two, okay? See, I even go to the brain, brainos, brainoscope here for, to, just to explain this. This is very important. This is the core of the five precepts, to be honest, because this will decide your act and deeds. And this will decide your life as well. You know, the lifestyle, the kind of relationship, and hence your own personal well-being, and hence the well-being of your children, and hence the well-being of the world, because everyone has family. And if you have the shitty family upbringing, chances are they might also be led astray. And all, they might unleash it on their own partner, on their friends. So, back to the point. It, the summary of this talk is, just like business, you have to check every feasibility before you sign a contract and seal the deal. And even then, you still need to commit. You need to be understanding the risk and that. You need to work towards, you know, whatever, business or anything. When you lend the money, you want to generate more money and all that. In relationship, same thing. You don't go into relationship thinking, oh, yeah, it's going to end up in divorce. But you walk in there and thinking, oh, it might break. Yes, there are risks in my break, but you don't want to break it. And how do you not break it? Uh, first thing, don't jump in and, and, and do it first. Everything has a cost. All right? I'm not talking about money. No, this is not prostitution. I'm talking about proper relationship. All right? No matter how close they are, this thing comes, does not come cheap. Does not come comically. Does not come out of nowhere. Thin air. You know, in Chinese, they're saying to, to have a same, to have a same pillow with the other half of your life, your soulmates. It takes 500 years of cultivation together. It's not cheap. Everything has a cost. If you, if you pre-wrap, you, if you unwrap it too quickly, what you're going to do is you're going to get a discounted version. Right, you're going to give her a discounted version, she's going to give you a discounted version. He or she, doesn't matter. All right? That's another topic. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I can write like proper talk on this. Um, because this, this is important to, in our modern mindset, we still also need to cultivate five precepts. That it, there's no excuse. Oh, it's old fashioned, doesn't matter. As long as it brings benefit to you and your community, it's a good talk. No one wants a bad relationship. No one wants a bad marriage. Everyone wants a good relationship. Everyone wants a good marriage. And good marriage brings out good family upbringings most of the time. Loving children, children who grown in a loving family. Right, are more likely to be more loving and caring and considerate. That's how we save the world. By not committing sexual misconduct. I think that is more important than than the rest. The, the, the rest is quite obvious. This one. 